who wanted it more, like you said, Skip. Yeah. I mean, the physicality is really getting into the Philadelphia Sixers. I mean, I uh, thought, you know, when I when I look at the Philly identity, you know, I envision them as a, a physical team, a tough defensive grinded out team, but it's like the Knicks took that to the next level. I mean, every possession, if you watch, they're up on the on the Philadelphia 76ers, not giving them any space. They got every offensive rebound. They, they showed they're tougher, and they got behind their crowd last night, which the atmosphere in the Garden is amazing. I've always loved playing it at the New York uh, at Garden. But the one player who I thought can calm them down, the one player who I thought did, wouldn't make the mistakes, he did everything to help them lose the game, Kyle Lowry. Mm. You know, he missed the free throw, which, you know, you expect a veteran who's won you a do. championship to make the, that free throw. And, and then he makes the turnover down the stretch. You know, as a poised veteran, that's a point where you're supposed to know you have a timeout down the stretch. You, you don't panic. And there's two occasions where I saw Maxi just, they just ripped the ball out of his hands. They and did. At the end, and, and, and uh, in the middle of the game, where the young player that came off the bench, uh, the shooter. McBride? Or? McBride. Yeah, yeah. Deuce McBride mm -hmm. just snatched the ball from Max. He did. And right there, I was just like, I was, I'm just watching this game, and from the yeah. eye test, I'm like, they're just tougher than them. Mm. Even Chinzo, he comes in, he gets all up in their face, knocks down three. Bogdanovich comes in, hits crucial threes. He did. I mean, how do you win when Jalen Brunson is, you're, you're doing everything right on Jalen Brunson. Mm. The guy showed he's a superstar this year. You're, you're holding him to a low percentage shooting. He's not putting up big numbers. Josh Hart comes in, and, and he's the heart and soul. He has a big first half. You, you shut him down in the second half, and it just comes down to the role players. They just show me they're tougher than the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, and Embiid, he just seems like he can't rebound when they need it most. He can't move out there. I mean, he's getting his numbers because he's so talented, and, and the way he can shoot the ball, the way he at free throw line doesn't need dribbles or, or, or in the post. But he's laboring out there, and you can see it. And it's hurting, yep. it's hurting the Philadelphia 76ers defensively because when I see them put him in pick and roll or they need a key rebound, he's not able to get there. And so I, I don't know how the knee gets any better in the next few days. And going back to Philly, maybe that'll give you some more energy. Uh, maybe New York Knicks fed off their crowd the, the, because of their intensity. But New York just looked like a better coach team. They look like the more physical team and they look like the tougher team to me. They certainly are uh, more scrappy, I would call yeah. it. I'm not going to say that they, they're tougher. They, when you look outside of Jalen Bronson from just a pure talent, all-star standpoint, the rest of those guys, when, he's, when he was, he's been off in these two games, he's shooting 29% from the field, 17% from three. <laughs> think about that. I can that. shoot 17% no, 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 from no, three. Seriously. That's what I'm saying. And, and so here's a guy. But, but think about 29% from the field. He's 16 for 55? Yeah. yeah. And they won two and they, games? And they won two what? Games. That's just yeah, because tough, everybody else, from a role-playing standpoint, as we talk about these other teams... That is correct. ...that superstars struggle, all of a sudden, everybody else comes to the party. Whether it's DiVincenzo coming to the party where all of a sudden Josh Hart looks like the Lakers should have never got rid of him, True. comes to the party. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. that's just something that happens. And then you factor in Embiid not being himself, right? You, it, it, that injury is certainly playing something in his mind because you can tell based on how he gets up and down the floor, he's limping at times. When they get him caught in situations, he doesn't try to defend. He doesn't jump for the rebounds. He just wants them to... Yeah. He kind of... He's like doing the Joker thing right now, waiting for it to come off, That's true. carry him off the, re off, the, off the rim so now I can follow That's it. a good point. Then when you talk about the end of the game, there's a couple things that come to mind for me. One, you call a timeout. After a few seconds, you realize I can't inbound ball on the ball. I need to call a timeout. Not only do I need to call hey, a timeout. Kyle Lowry's got my, the ball in his hands. He could call yeah, a timeout. Call yeah, call timeout. Yeah. Nick not Nurse only that, is trying, not but Not I don't... only that, my bench sees that I'm in trouble, yeah. I need my coach to run out on the floor yeah. and call a timeout. Right. So, okay, right. that didn't happen. Yeah. Now, he, I he, am... He tried to call time after the ball was loose on the floor after it got inbounded yeah. to... Yes, but to that's too late it's at too that late. point. Yeah. Now, I am ball the ball to Tyrese Maxey. Yeah. He falls down. Now, I need him to just roll over, you, you squeeze just, it, and call... You, scream it, you, squeeze it, and call timeout. For sure, you can't lose the basketball. A lot, you just can't. A lot happens 
in pressure situations, people panic. And when you panic, nothing good ever happens mm -hmm. in those situations. Nothing if you good. look at this video right here, there's yep. two coaches. It's Nick Nurse, yep. and then there's another coach, both trying to call timeout yep. at simultaneously at the same time. But because Tyrese didn't possess the ball, yep. they're not going to give it to him. They're not going to give it And you. that's how they lost that game. Yeah. Heartbreakers. Hard, hard. Heartbreakers. Josh Hart is the... Uh, he's the difference in this series. I'm telling you. I mean, he's get. I look up, and the smallest guy on the court... What, one of the smallest guys on the court is averaging 12, 13 rebounds a night. He is. I mean, he had no, 15 rebounds. He had 15 rebounds. How does this guy get 15 rebounds? Uh, he's averaging 14 He's averaging four, games. 14, <laughs> 14 rebounds games. a night. Okay. He's the leading he's rebound for the on series. he's getting defensive end, though. He's getting offensive rebounds, though. He's getting four offensive rebounds, too. Yeah, he's no. He's leading in that category. All right. I mean, they're just a tougher team. I'm going to amplify Key's point. I love Joel Embiid. Half from the start. Half when he was at Kansas. Pushed him for two straight years to be MVP, MVP, and he finally broke through last year and won it. But I can't defend what I'm seeing right now. In the fourth quarter, he played all 12 minutes, and he got zero rebounds. Zero. Hey, you're 7-1 or whatever he is. You would just stand there and get one, can't you? Can't I might move. get one on a loose move. ball yeah, or somewhere. Move. That I, knee's bothering him. Okay, yeah. it, it is bothering him. And a couple times, he went to the bench in his rest moments, and he sat, and he had them massage his knee and made a big issue out of it. Okay. I don't weigh 300 pounds, but I've had that same surgery three times on medial meniscus. You've had it yeah, once, had it. right? Have you had knee? No, I've had it twice. Twice, had it twice, twice. Okay, so you've had it twice. I've had it three times. Trust me, massage doesn't do it any good at all. You, you just don't massage it, <laughs> it, and it's for show. It's like he wants everybody to know. Wants the trainer come over here and massage my knee. I want everybody to know my knees bothering me. I don't know because that. But <laughs> well, that's I hear how it you. comes across to me. Like, come on, yeah, Joel, yeah, just play. Know. If, you, if you're going to show up, just play. D yeah. Don't drag around. If you can't go, you can't go. Let, let somebody else yeah, go. Let, let the, the, somebody just, just play small. And yet, in the, in the fourth quarter, he took three threes. One of them was desperation at the buzzer. Mm -hmm. But he missed all three. And, and for the series now, he's been terrible from three, and he's taken way too many because... He's now four of 17 in the two games from three. Well, those are that's that's way too many. That's 13 missed threes. Well, if threes. you go back and you look at game one, those threes that he mainly was taking was in the second half. Once yeah. he got hurt, yeah, he, he was afraid to, to go. Yeah, he true. just couldn't get to the rim. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, no. All right, so Knicks just want it worse. They want it more. And if we could look at the last sequence again, Isaiah Hartenstein has no business playing Joel Embiid like this in... in and, and having success against him. And Joel just stood there. If, if Joel gets up and gets the defensive rebound, I, I don't think we're having this conversation. No. Mm. Anybody. No. I, I love guys who have the guts to take a second three after they've missed one, because it's yeah. not that, it, it's not fun, man, because you know, right on the island. hey, you, you're by yourself, and they kick the ball back to you, and you just missed one. Yeah, but he, gonna knock, but he gonna knock that down. As soon as he got it the second time, I knew he was gonna knock it down. It's like a field goal kicker. When you try to ice him, he kicks it, he misses. That's the worst thing okay, you can do. Okay, but I've, I've seen those shots missed a second and yeah. a third yeah, time. Yeah, I've yeah. seen a miss but before. But that's with bad shooters. Okay, but this he's is not a bad he is shooter. not a bad no, shooter. He's, no, he's, not he's a bad another shooter. Philadelphia kid, right. and he j they, they got some tough kids. So all of a sudden, I, I look up, and Tyrese has the ball going the other way, and Hardenstein is trailing him. <laughs> That's a game saver, okay? Yeah. By Isaiah Hartenstein. He did it again, right? Offensive rebound and the block at the end. Okay. That's just the that's just the taking on the personality of their coach. This is who Tibbs is. This is who Tibbs was yeah. when he was our defensive that's coordinator true. here in Boston. Yeah. And, and now he's was bringing he this. On the championship yeah, he was he was on our championship. Yeah. He was our defensive coach. This is just the mentality he brings to New York. And you can see how it feeds into the playoff players. This is who he's been in Chicago. And this is who he is in the Knicks. Mm. I think he just, he gets a bunch of players that fits his personality. Yep. And they play hard, and they're going to grind it out, and they're going to give you everything they got. He plays Josh Hart 48 minutes a night. I mean, what did he play? <laughs> he played 48 again tonight. He hasn't come out the game. <laughs> Tibbs will run you into the ground. I will tell you that. But... So what did he bring they, to your championship team? How, brought, how long just, did it take for you guys to buy into what he was selling? No, he's a, he's a coach that demands respect. Mm. And... and 
you know, out the gate. You know how many days I watched him and Kevin Garnett argue? Because <laughs> Kevin Garnett is, is, a, is a strong personality yes, guy, and is. so is Tibbs. Yeah. And when I seen Tibbs not okay, back so down Okay, so Tibbs is, is another one who did not play. So, yeah. right? He didn't bring no, any cachet. No, Doc no. played. Doc yeah, was Doc pretty played, good. But Tibbs demanded respect. Okay. And he brought his personality in it. And it and it flowed through our team because he was a defensive guy. He was a hard-nosed, hard-hat guy. And it flowed into your into our team. And that's what you see from the Knicks. They're taking on his personality. And most teams do that. Most teams, when you got a good coach that you respect, you take on the personality of either your coach or your best player. Mm. And, and you can see that with the New York Knicks. They're a hard hat, hard, hard wearing hat yeah. team that just so did, Tough, did KG don't give buy up. into Tibbs yeah, after a absolutely, while? Absolutely, absolutely he bought into him. And that's why they fit so well. And that's the year that KG be won his first defensive player oh, of the I year award. About that. He huh. won defensive player okay. of the year uh, because of Tibbs. Huh. What, what would Tibbs try to teach that KG didn't <laughs> buy? They bumped heads on, on, on a lot of coverages because KG knew things. He was one of the best, most intelligent uh, defenders, but Tibbs knew a lot too. So at times they'll bump heads, argue, want to fight each other in practice. It was amazing to see, I'm telling you. There's a lot of stories that didn't get out and they probably won't. But a lot of times they would, they would almost want to come to blows uh, based on what they want to cover they, that day uh, for our scout report. But... Maybe we'll see it one day when y'all... Maybe, maybe, maybe it'll be a somebody's reality show or together. It won't, it won't come from me, I'll tell you that. But maybe uh, we'll but see it one day when y'all are able to put a reality show together like no, the Lakers no, no down there. You know? no, no reality show. Only difference no. is nobody really <laughs> want to watch Boston. Dynasty. Yeah, nobody really want to watch Boston. Hey, hey, listen. You, you see this shirt? Yep. You see this? Mm. How you feeling this morning? How you feeling this morning? I'm good, man. You ain't get no sleep. How you could come here feeling good and you ain't get no sleep? Yeah, we gonna be anyway, all right. We'll be I okay. think it's over for Philadelphia. Joel Embiid is limping into game three. Yep. I think they took their heart with game that game. That's a game Thursday? you're supposed to. Psychologically, I don't see how they recover. Game three's Thursday? I think I'm not I, sure. Is it Thursday? Yeah. I think it is. And I, yeah, Thursday, Thursday, look, yeah. I had Philly going to the conference finals because I felt like they were the one team that can challenge Boston because of Joel Embiid. But the way Joel Embiid's leg is looking right yeah. now, I'm not sure he can make a deep playoff run with the yeah. way that leg is Seth, You know, look, he's got some days of rest. This thing just got pushed to seven versus six. They're going home for two. Yeah. I believe that they get the two in Philadelphia. It's a hostile environment. You know the way their fans are going to be. And they go home, they even a score. I just, I just don't because see Because they how. are the better team. They're, they're the more talented and, team. Well, okay, more they're talented. They're the more talented team, talented, I'll give you that. better, whichever one you want to call it. They should have won both of these games. Yeah. They're the more talented Easy. team. So I hated it for Tyrese Maxey. I'm a big fan. I just love to watch him play basketball because yeah. he plays with such joy and spirit and yeah, energy. Absolutely. And it's just fun to watch for me. He was ill. I don't know exactly what was wrong with him. But he, he still some, came out and gave you 35. That's what I'm saying. But I thought, speaking of Michael Jordan, I thought he had a Michael Jordan moment coming in the fourth quarter because he scored 15 points, and I thought it was going to be his flu game. You know, it was going to be the Tyrese Maxey Michael Jordan Memorial flu game. And it was until it wasn't. And to your point, if the ball is inbounded cleanly to you and you have both hands on it, you just can't give it up. Josh Hart and... Just they, they, they just they just took it out of his hands. Yeah, but it was a bad pass. You, know? you don't throw that inbound ball when a guy is double. You mean like a bad that. idea? Because it wasn't a well, bad pass. It got in his hands. Yeah, but, hit, but yeah. as they get in the hand, I'm messing. Oh, I'm chicken fight with everybody listen, around me. We've clean seen it, is we've me seen. over here and Paul over there. That's we clean. We've seen how the referees are. They're just letting. They let them play. play. Let yeah. them play. So as that became a full shock. They Kyle I'm shocked that he didn't call a timeout. Yeah, well, he could have. That's that's the initiator. Yeah. Like, but right there, when you see that I can't necessarily get it in and I'm waiting for him to uncover, just call a timeout. Okay, but do now I... Now you're going to advance it half court. Okay, I know that, but do, do I... Would I be just okay, be just fine with Tyrese Maxey going to the other free throw line? I would. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I mean, I, I'm, he's going to go make those free it's throws. It's a scary proposition when I got two dudes hovering around me and he's the only one moving, everybody else standing still... It's almost like the A.D. LeBron inbound pass against the Pelicans <laughs> almost that almost was a disaster. Yeah, it was. And A.D. happened to stumble and fall, so they called the timeout. Yeah, I mean, they Tyrese called the is so foul. quick. He can get open, and he did get open. He just couldn't hold on to the basketball. They, they basically just yeah. sort of mugged him. You know, they just, they just beat him up. Okay? Mm. Well, all right. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? 
make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.